Good evening. Thank you very much for joining our event. My name is Yasuko Uchida, and I'm director of the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. The Japan Foundation Los Angeles promotes international awareness and mutual understanding between Japan and the U.S. through a wide range of programs and grants supporting Japanese language education and arts and cultural exchange programs. Today, we are very proud to present the online event, Breaking the Silence, a conversation with Kazuki Takizawa and Dr. Miwa Hitsumoto. This is an invaluable opportunity to learn about mental health and the benefits of making art with Los Angeles-based grass artist Kazuki Takizawa and Dr. Miwa Hitsumoto, executive and clinical director of the Center for Japanese Mental Health. Mr. Takiza Kazuki Takizawa is a Japanese grass artist based in Los Angeles, California. He graduated from the University of Hawaii at Manoa with a BFA in grass art and currently owns and runs KT Grassworks. He uses grasses as a metaphor for living with bipolar disorder and to destigmatize mental illness. His work has been featured on NBS Asian America, American Craft Magazine, and Voyage LA Magazine. Most recently, his first solo museum exhibi exhibition, Tomoshibi Grass Works by Kazuki Takizawa, is currently on display at Craft Contemporary in LA until September 12. So if you have time, please last to see the exhibition before it ends. Dr. Hashimoto, uh, sorry, Dr. Hitsumoto is one of the most experienced psychotherapists in, in or outside Japan regarding multi-ethnic and cross-cultural counseling. Prior to practicing critical psychology as a psychotherapist, Dr. Hitsumoto worked in Japan as a software engineer and marketing manager for large international corporations. So she is a scientist with broad social experience. Today, through the conversation, you will learn how Kazuki uses his artistic practice as a vehicle to speak out and educate about mental health and as a personal therapeutic process. You will also hear from Dr. Hitsumoto, who will explain how creative activities positively benefit of a mental health and well-being. The conversation will be moderated by Andres Payan Estrada, curator of Pacific Engagement at the Craft Contemporary, where Kazuki's solo exhibi exhibition is now open. Well, I would like to hand over the baton to Kazuki. He will give a short presentation about his art, followed by conversation with Dr. Hitsumoto and close with Q&A session. So please enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me okay? I hope so. Uh, my name is, thank you so much for the introduction and I'm so excited to be here and uh, present in front of you uh, a, um, a topic that I really feel important about um, and uh, also introduce myself and introduce my art along the way. Uh, so today I have a, uh, prepared for you uh, uh, some slides uh, of pieces of work that I've done in the past. Uh, hopefully that will kind of help you guys kind of understand uh, where I'm coming from and uh, what my art entails. Give me one second. Uh, 
Okay. So I hope everybody can hear me still. All right. So uh, my name is Kazuki Takazawa again. Welcome. I'm right now in my studio. Uh, I am located in West Adams neighborhood in Los Angeles. And right here is my showroom. And it's actually above the glass blowing studio where I um, make my work daily. Uh, this is my glass blowing studio. It's called KT Glass Works. And this is where uh, magic happens. I work for a bunch of people uh, making glass designs, um, as well as, uh, you know, I, I have uh, wonderful friends, uh, glass blowers who um, work out of my studio as well. Uh, just really quickly, um, some of the things that I uh, make uh, in the studio are, you know, uh, functional things uh, such as lighting, uh, tableware, and um, it's really have been this uh, glass blowing has been uh, really uh, been a key element in my uh, mental health as well. Uh, it, it, it's a really difficult uh, art form to to uh, to work in. So um, I can really find myself really immense in uh, just honing my skill every day in the hot shop uh, when I'm working. And um, I, this is a type of uh, art form that I get to work with a bunch of artists as well. You can't blow glass by yourself. So that's also one thing that, um, that I really like about this art form and it has really helped me personally overcome some of the uh, mental health challenges that I have personally had. Over here is my friend David, who uh, helps me on almost every every piece that I make here in the studio. Uh, on the pipe is uh, one of my minim minimalist series work, which contains tons of black and white line pattern that we make here. Um, so a little bit about myself. I grew up in Hong Kong uh, in a family of four. I have a really cute uh, little brother. Uh, right there and uh, he's not so little anymore I guess uh, he's living in Tokyo and my parents live in Bangkok uh, this is a house in Bangkok uh, where I used to where I went to high school in my parents are Japanese we're all Japanese uh, I grew up abroad my entire life and I started learning English when I was in uh, middle school so I um, language was a, a really big barrier uh, growing up and it's a little bit uh, it's a it's a it's a pretty big part of uh, my work and um, a lot uh, major component major key um, reason why I, I do what I do is because I think I in my childhood I felt the need to um, express myself and um, I wasn't able to do that very very thoroughly with language. So I naturally became to look for art. Um, I, and I went to a school in Hawaii. That's where I uh, learned how to blow glass. And so um, I was originally really drawn to some of these uh, seashells, forms of seashells that I found. And um, these are some of the things that I made uh, in college. It's called Auric shelter. It's a it's a shelter that you can go and walk in, and experience the light, uh, the the effect of colored light. Um, I'm very much into uh, you know alternative he healing or any kind of information I can get to um, stay healthy mentally, uh, because I um, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was in college, right around that this time. And so, um, you know, I've done a ton of therapy and, um, and it's, been, it's been really empowering to keep learning about different topics. So you'll see in my work, um, I talk about those things that I, I've learned. This is a cartoon that I grow, grew up watching. My neighbor Totoro, Totoro. <laughs> um, the characters are bowing in, in front of this uh, uh, really, old tree that is ornamented with Shinto decoration that celebrates the deities that live within it. So um, 
culture is a really big part of uh, my work as well. Even though I don't um, consider myself, um, uh, I don't know, fully like fully Japanese. I, I you know, uh, I grew up abroad, but like the culture and the the belief is still there. And um, oftentimes, I wonder when I make glass and art, what does my what does my glass mean or what does my glass contain natural you know or originally glass has been a medium for um vessel making and i love that about glass i love that it has been used for centuries to make uh vessels um you know it started out as a, a core form vessel which were uh found in mesopotamia um you know two thousand years ago and it, they held the important perfume inside, you know, all the way up to like, and when, when they really, when the glass blowing really flourished in Venice, Italy, uh, where they used ornamented, really like elaborately ornamented goblets to drink um, out of, you know, and these are precious material that has been passed down for, you know, years and years, generation to generation, and it has tons of meaning um, associated with it and I this is my longest series of work it's called I call it the container series and um, it has features that look kind of like shell on the top of the uh, the, the stem or um, yeah so I, I oftentimes uh, wonder what my vessel would contain uh, what my vessel is meant to hold um, I'm assuming it's something important, uh, you know, uh, I think that the vessel serves as a purpose to protect something, even like a stained glass. Well, it's a part of a house. It's part of a, you know, a protection of something that's inside you. And so I often think about what is important to me and what do I want to protect? And um, so these are some of the uh, background stories that I have. Uh, that originated to make these pieces. Um, I will share um, a few images uh, that are currently, uh, uh, you know, from pieces that are exhibited in the uh, the current exhibition Tomoshibi, uh, which mean, means uh, small light, like candle light. That's a Tomoshibi light. It's like a small resilient light that keeps on burning, you know, in the darkness, but um, it's a really soft light. It's really resilient. So that's what the title of the exhibition is. And um, in the entrance of the exhibition, there are these uh, three guardian pieces that uh, greets you. So it's kind of like a um, elaborate, like this, this is uh, uh, almost the height of me. And um, so it's an elaborate version of my container series work that includes lots of elements of protection, such as horns, lids, um, you know, like part of a garment or feather, uh, something that you would ornament your, yourself with, you know? And um, so I think it's important, you know, when you talk about mental health to have something that you hang on to um, as a protection. And I found, you know, like that to be very important and in, in part of, my work and and also um, part of who I am. So these are the three guardian series that will greet you when you go to the exhibition uh, at the Craft Contemporary Museum in, in LA. Uh, here is a, uh, a form that I uh, really felt close to when I got the chance to go help my younger brother who uh, in 2015, he had a really um, rough, rough patch in his life. He was having a really severe suicidal ideation. Um, and then my family got together to go help him in Tokyo. Uh, I live here in LA. My parents live in Bangkok and we got there um, to kind of give him the help that he needs. And um, I've learned a ton of uh, I've learned a lot uh, during that uh, trip. And so this is a, a installation that I've done uh, with a bunch of 
vessels that are off center like that, that I've, that my brother inspired me at the time. Okay, so that was a pivotal moment in my life where um, somebody very important to me um, was having a really, really hard time. And um, we, uh, family got together to kind of give them the hand, the, the help, um, which at that time I didn't, we didn't really know how to help him. And so um, that's when I started uh, kind of really taking this direction of uh, speaking about mental health through art and and um, I really want to thank my brother always uh, for letting me use this story in, in my slideshows. Uh, he's a really courageous guy and he's really healthy now and um, his action has um, inspired me to to keep going and um, and I've made uh, different series of breaking the silence installations. Uh, this one uh, is like a colored version of it. And literally um, these are uh, bells that uh, hit each other when the whole armature swings sideways and, and uh, break the silence about um, this kind of topic that's very tough to talk about. This is a piece that's in the exhibition. It has a, um, a glass sphere that I dropped and glued back together. Um, but it's at the, the result, end result is like a vessel that cannot hold water anymore. Uh, in Japanese, we use the word vessel 
to refer to humans sometimes. Uh, you know, like, Utsuma no Oki Hito. It's like somebody who can, it's like a person of a big vessel can uh, take in a lot of stress. Um, you're, you're like a person with a big heart, you know, um, as opposed to somebody who's like a small vessel will collapse really soon, like faster. Um, I know I'm kind of going over time, but this is another piece that's in the exhibition. It does talk about your relationship with things that you have around you. Um, I've been really interested in the, the lifestyle of living simple. So this is a, a you know, series of work that is called, uh, that I call it my minimalist series. And in the minimalist series, there is the black and white lines that's really complex that has within the simple appearance. You know, even to live a simple lifestyle, it's not simple. You have to make these decisions in order for you to create space to throw away something. It's like either a black or white decisions that you really have to work hard to make, make that decision. Otherwise, you're not going to make that space, physical space, mental space for your happiness. And that's what this piece, this series is about. Um, earlier, I talked about myself being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Well, that's a, a, a disorder that is uh, characterized by having really high energy and at times of really low energy, which is the depressed depression and mania or hypomania. So this is a piece that's uh, inspired by that polar opposite um, tendency that I have. The stoppers are really colorful and vibrant with energy and lots of lots of color. Um, that's kind of like my mania. It's like lots of color. I get a lot of ideas. I feel like I can do everything. But then, you know, if I don't control it, it's going to become the stopper. So it's like a stopper that drives me. So that's kind of uh, my take on bipolar disorder. And um, this installation is... Um, uh, uh, it, it contains like 35 of the you know, 30, 30 something bottles, uh, uh, and it, it takes up the, the central part of the exhibition room at the Contemporary Museum, uh, Craft Contemporary Museum. Um, and a lot of people put their time into this. Uh, the paper cranes that are holded, uh, the you know, is uh, became the nest here was part of an online programming that I, myself and the Craft Contemporary Museum and actually Andres, Andres from uh, Craft Contemporary, um, we, we all uh, made an online program and made a call for um, paper cranes. And so a bunch of people um, helped out or put in a lot of time and sent, me, sent us to the studio folded pieces of paper crane and then we hand dyed them and uh, that became the nest uh, of this piece. Um, it takes a community to kind of keep somebody healthy who's uh, really struggling with mental illness. Um, this is a piece called Bluebird. That's also a uh, last piece that I'm gonna share with you today. And it's also the kind of like the last piece that's in the um, exhibition room. Uh, Blue, Bluebird is actually um, uh, represents happiness or luck in, in a few different cultures. Um, and I, when I was a kid, baby, you know, kid, um, my mom used to read this book called, uh, I think, The, Blue, the Bluebird, and it's uh, based off of a uh, French play. And in this book, the, the two siblings will go on a journey um, in their dream, um, or there, there, there's different versions of the story, but they, they go out looking for this bluebird that represents happiness. They don't know where it is. They don't, they can't find it anywhere. And at the end of the story, at the end of the book, they find it in their backyard. And that's, I, that's how I felt like when I started to become healthy with my mental health, I felt like, 
you know, I did the journaling, I did the going to counselors and psychiatrists and uh, exercise, regular exercise and um, going to like group uh, peer, peer um, therapy, um, all of that. And then uh, I felt like when I was, when I grabbed something that I felt like, okay, this is happiness. I felt like that was something like really close, closer than that. After I did all the hard work, you have to do the hard work, but I felt like this story really resonated me with me. And I actually got this book in a, a used secondhand store. Like I found, I found one and I, 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 I sometimes read it too. I show it to my newborn uh, uh, one-year-old daughter now. So that's the end of my uh, talk. I hope you guys enjoyed and um, I hope you guys have questions and um, you guys can type in the chat. And um, uh, that is the last of my slides. Thank you guys so much. Hello everyone. Hi, Kazuki. Um, so I'm also going to welcome Dr. Miwa Itsumoto to join us. Um, Hello. And we're going to be starting. Uh, thank you, Kazuki, so much for sharing your work with us. Um, there were a few folks who uh, joined us a little bit late. Uh, just a reminder that this program will is recorded, is being recorded, and will be shared uh, through the Japan Foundation, and it will also be shared with everyone that had registered through the uh, Craft and Folk Art Museum. And this section of the program, I will be moderating. My name is Andres Payan Estrada, and I am the curator of public engagement at Craft Contemporary. And the second, the sec, this, the section of the program will be more of a conversation, uh, more a little bit more informal conversation to talk a bit, a little bit about mm -hmm. both Kazuki Takizawa's practice, um, but then also Dr. Miwa Hitsumoto's work as a therapist and also as a as a clinician and the director of 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 the Japan Mental Health Institution that's up in Pasadena, um, but. I will, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and open it a little bit. And I actually, I, I would like to open it uh, to hear a bit about uh, Dr. Dr. Hitsumoto Miwa. If yes. you could tell us a little bit about um, your uh, work and- My um, work? Uh -huh. Your work and also um, why, what made you want to become a therapist? Sure, of course. Oh, but before I start, I was so impressed with Kazu-san's work and it's so insightful and inspiring. Anyway, so my work, I'm a psychotherapist. And then I think you just asked me what makes you want to become a therapist. Is it, Andres? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me start. So I actually started high school in Ohio. I grew up in Japan, but I was an exchange student and came to Ohio when I was 15, right before I was turned 16 years old. But I don't speak that good English like Kazu-san because now I mainly see my clients are all in Japanese, mostly Japanese. And then I live with like a very much close with Japanese society. But however, so I remember I was in college, okay, from Ohio. I started my college in UCLA, in a big city. So I became really homesick, right? So people tell me, Miwa, uh, you should go see psychologists. But however, whoever I saw back then, I couldn't really connect to him, right? So we couldn't relate to each other. So I was feeling like really sad and I told myself, okay, in the future, once I grown up, I want to become a therapist who can help Japanese. So that's what I'm doing. However, this is the little complication. After I got my degree, I just decided, hey, you know, I want to go into the real world to make money. So I started to work for some uh, big company. Oh, it's IBM. So I was an engineer. Okay. I forgot about helping people. And then I started my uh, life in Japan. And after that, I had a second call. So again, I got in trouble because I married and I had a lot of issue because I thought I'm very Japanese, but whoever I marry, we had some conflict. So I look for MFT, who I am right now, by the way, Meditation Family Therapist, but I couldn't find any MFT in Tokyo, right? So that's actually uh, made me 
think like, okay, this is really God calling. I have to go back to America. So I came back to the state and study. And now I am, I'm actually um, doing what I originally thought I wanted to be. And I'm working in Pasadena, but I also work with many Japanese people all over the world. I have a client in Bangkok, Tokyo, Germany, and even in state like Texas. Many Japanese, mm -hmm. by the way, moved to Texas, <laughs> something like that. So this is my second life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, what, what I, I remember in, in previous conversations, like I, I, I've always found a lot of value in, in, in these connections of, 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 um, of being able to have a therapist and then being able to talk to someone um, or even mm -hmm. being able to walk into a museum and see mm -hmm. an artist or an exhibition or ideas that mm -hmm. resonate for you and actually tell stories that are similar to yours and, and mm -hmm. from, people, from people that, that connect to these ideas. Uh, and for mm -hmm. that, I, I've always, I, I, I found quite fascinating that, that you, when you talk, it, it, was, it was a lot of, of, of connecting to and being able to serve a Japanese audience that, that yes. you could understand, uh, which is right. really fascinating. That's right. Because I think psychotherapy is very much like, uh, how do I say, it's not only uh, psychology, but also culture, but also language. And, but also many, many, you know, meaning. Like Kajisan said earlier, right? What it means. So that's very important. And then this close cultural thing makes such a huge difference in psychotherapy. So you can relate to the person's experience. Yeah. Absolutely. But I really do want a Japanese people, because uh, we have a stigma in Japanese society when it comes to psychotherapy, right? Okay, you're going to psychologist, psychiatrist, maybe something wrong with you. But no, it's nothing wrong. It's, it's just a human experience to experience different emotions, different, you know, things, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. And mm -hmm. it's also kind of like how I see it, it's also kind of this, this part of, of, of being human and, and connecting mm -hmm. with other individuals in order to kind of like communicate or process or, or relate right. to. Um, right, that's, that's foster healing, I think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And since you mentioned healing, um, mm -hmm. could, could you talk a little bit about um, kind of um, how, how, do, how do creative activities um, mm -hmm. um, from your experience have helped mm -hmm. improve mental health? And, mm -hmm. um, and I, I also I wanted to mm -hmm. hear a little bit of, of how you sometimes apply these things in your practice. Sure. So, you know, I think you're talking about art therapy, right? So art therapy, my definition is, so it's the form of therapy, which incorporates a creative method of expression, which is art, like a cousin just shared with us. That leads to um, healing and also mental health you know, good mental health. And I think the advantage is like our first thing is self-expression. I remember Kazan just mentioned about, he said because of a language barrier, right? He was in Bangkok, he was in Gibbon, in I think Hong Kong. So it was difficult to express, but he found out express himself through art. That's I think he, you said that, right? So self-expression is so important. So art therapy actually enable us to do that. So that's one thing. My number one, you know, thing is that. And second one is it's enhanced coping skill. Right, Andres? What do you think? You know, like you so stressed up, you decided drinking beer to, you know, cope your stress. Your stomach gets bigger and bigger, and you don't like yourself. The <laughs> show? Yeah. So. It's a good coping skill. Instead of drinking beer, maybe you draw some nice pictures, start to take a, some photo. So you, need, you start to walk your, the forest. So it's, a, I think, en enhanced coping skill. And then again, that would lead to stress uh, management, right? And then after that, because of all, all of this helps to boost your self-esteem. So I think like when I think of art therapy, this four points are the biggest. Hmm. Well, am I answering your question? Yeah, no, I'm I sorry. Mean, you know, I mean, I, I was thinking, and because um, uh -huh. I've heard uh, Kazuki mm -hmm. also talk, talk a, a bit about this and, and talking about kind of 
that moment of, of, mm -hmm. of focus and, and creation. And could, could you could you maybe share a little bit, uh, Kazuki, about what what has been your experience as as far as like because your your practice, I, I see there's almost like uh, there, it's twofold because there is uh, your practice and your creative making in the studio as part of this uh, self therapeutic and self healing and, and and kind of like mental health component. But it also serves as a way of communicating these things through 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 what you do. Can you talk a little bit about um, how the making um, is is in, you have incorporated that into your own kind of process of mental health? Sure. Yeah. Um, like I was, uh, yeah, I, I hope everybody saw like what I, the general things I do. And, um, there's so many things that I, the little things that I, um, I really like about glass blowing in general for, first of all, um, it, it's a really physical, um, art form where you have to use your, the body weight to counterbalance the weight of the glass. So mm -hmm. it's almost like a sport, um, and, and the community aspect as well. I really um kind of just like hit hit the spot or uh, however yeah. you want to put it but um it, it was just like the the golden medium for me um and the one of the main main reason why i keep using glasses because i like being in the hot shop and and my health is better i think that's that's probably uh why i keep blowing glass and um i really felt it when i when it was uh um, you know, uh, when, when there was a, in LA and there was a time where we had to stay at home and, uh, we had to shut down the furnace and, um, mm -hmm. I, I was still like, I think, I think, uh, we decided at that point I needed, I, you know, I needed something to do. So I started folding paper cranes and that's mm -hmm. how, you know, through the exhibition being postponed for a year, uh, over a year. And, mm -hmm. you know, we got like so many camera cranes and I, I just kept my hands still moving and that was just like my act of trying to hang on because it was just, there was just so much going on in my head so um so yeah. I, I did a lot of moving my hand and and it's it's really really um helpful personally um along with uh what dr hisamoto said too um i think i think uh psychotherapy like um, and counseling uh, for people who are, uh, you know, having uh, some um, hard time managing their mental health. I, I think that structure is very important. Um, and in addition to uh, things that are stress relieving, like art therapy or just doing art, uh, talking to people, uh, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff is also really, really helpful in combination with those uh, structural structure things that all of the things that they, you know, recommend to do, I think. Yeah, That's actually, um, Andres, so like, you know, he said, right, uh, regular talk therapy, like psychotherapy, along with art therapy, both important. So in my practice, I really do incorporate art therapy you know, it's such a necessary part. For example, like not everyone can talk and then verbally express themselves, especially like Japanese people are not well for sharing about feeling, right? Traditional like a psychotherapy, psychoanalytic, psychodynamic, right? Therapists ask, so how do you feel? Japanese you know, guys, I don't want to, you know, talk only guys, but Japanese are not going to share, oh, this is how I feel. They're not really good sharing about feeling. So it's not always about, you know, talk therapy is possible. I, for example, I have a one case. Uh, she was a five years old girl. Okay. So she didn't go to school. And then she tell her mom, oh, my tummy hurts. And she doesn't go to school. So one day, teacher told mom, hey, you have to bring your daughter to psychotherapist. So here she comes. Her name is Chie Chan. So I told Chie Chan, so what happened? Chie Chan doesn't tell me, like, wakanai, shiranai, you know, she doesn't tell me. So I asked her to draw the picture, mm. just that simple drawing. I got a bunch of crayons. I asked her, hey, let's do drawing. She started to draw, and then she drew bunny. Right, and she circled around the bunny. So I asked her, so what, is, what does it mean? She doesn't tell me how she feel, but she said, well, bunny feels she's scared. So now I know what it was is it's not 
her stomach. She was really scared to go to school, right? So sometimes this art can use as assessment tool as well because it really shows human people's subconscious part. So that's just, you know, one example in my uh, practice. I, I find that really, really interesting because I, I see these kind of like overlaps with also with Kazuki's mm -hmm. practice where mm -hmm. uh, an, an object or an image or something blown out of, out of glass is also mm -hmm. a carrier of a message um, yes. where it, it is the way that somebody, uh, where how Kazuki, you're communicating and in this case communicating um, what uh, communicating something in order to break down these stigmas of mental health. Uh, so it's interesting how 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 an, our creative kind of um, a creative kind of gesture can carry that 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 strength. E even a, even the drawing of the bunny or 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 the the blowing of, of a glass orb that is 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 also representative of the body uh, to mm -hmm. kind of somebody at home just uh, folding paper cranes in order to share that with Kazuki uh, at, at, at any at any instance. Um, which yeah, I, I was I amazed. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. I was so amazed when he said about lots of elements of protection. So this is like his one of the coping skill, right? It's 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 wonderful. I I was really attached when he said that. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, still this day, I think mental health mm. is very very confusing to me. Um, even though I feel like I did my you know my learning, and I still mm. do to this day. But, um, you know, I asked myself the simplest question, like, why am I in a bad mood? Like, mm. uh, right now, why am I in a bad mood right now? Mm. Um, is it because I haven't drank water in a while or, and I, I have a headache or it's like, it's like, um, uh, it's, it's really, it's really difficult to, to understand, uh, mental illness for me personally, mm. even though, um, you know, I've gotten the diagnosis, uh, years mm. ago and, and, uh, I've, I've learned a, a ton about about this, but um, but still, you know, even within people who are um, who live with um, these uh, mental health, uh, you know, conditions, uh, er everybody falls under a different spectrum, and everybody, you know, has their lives uh, in a different colored colorful way, and mm -hmm. a different community, different culture, mm -hmm. and. Um, People like you, uh, Dr. Hitsumoto, is gonna, um, your work that you do is such a specified, um, specialized uh, it, it, um, thing um, that you do and, and, mm -hmm. and it helps like uh, these, you know, people who, who are like in, in that culture, you know, of Japanese culture. And, uh, and I'm sure there's um, a ton of different other helps that are out there, mm -hmm. I, I know for sure. Um, for, for people who are looking for help. Yeah, right. Yeah, especially uh, I think this is pandemic and it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Like maybe like I remember like uh, people, you, you know, Japan, I work hard. After work, we go to drinking, go to karaoke. We, you know, explore energy, right? I mean, then we do stress management. But right now, this, you know, pandemic, it's hard to do such thing. So it is the time to adjust. And I thought like, wow, this art therapy is one of the really working method, you know, especially this time. You can just do at home, you can do anywhere. So I think it is, you know, great way to cope your um, stress and um, to be, you know, healthy. And I always think we should not pull the a bucket of water because you know the bucket water is dropping dropping but last drop it's overflow right so i don't want to happen like that i want people not to fill the bucket you know be mm -hmm. aware of it mm. It's interesting. I mean, that's a really interesting metaphor because that also reminds me of Kazuki's work. Um, yeah, kind of yeah. Like how how mm -hmm. vessel is meant to hold mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But then even even thinking of, of your sphere, Kazuki, how mm -hmm. it's broken and that vessel can't overflow, but it can't mm -hmm. even contain water anymore. Um, and it's, 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 it's interesting, at, at Dr. Miwa, mm -hmm. that you also mentioned the quarantine because I feel a few people in our questions have been um, asking asking a bit about quarantine and, and I myself and it was, it's, it was something that the museum was really aware is uh, kind of like thinking of, of, of how can we create spaces for people to be creative in order 
um, in order for them to have something to do at home. Um, <laughs> and it, and it, was, it was really interesting also kind of like as a, as a, as a larger society. I mm -hmm. mean, I, my, my perspective is, is specific to Western society in the United States and, and how mm -hmm. kind of like there was like banana bread and, and, and all these kind of like things that people were making and doing uh, mm -hmm. as, as a community but within themselves as as the ways of of even kind of just re-understanding and re rethinking who they were and and their yeah. place in 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 their homes or mm -hmm. or in a society that they were disconnected mm -hmm. from right i think so too yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well let's I, we have a few questions and if anybody else has questions I'm going to be reading through some of the questions in the chat and sharing those with uh, Kazuki and Dr. Hitsumoto. Sure. Um, let's see. Actually, somebody asked, due to COVID-19, many people stayed at home. Uh, have mental health cases increased? Um, yes. Yes, it Yes, I have so many calls every day. So again, you know, coping skill, you know, if you go to wrong coping skill, more domestic violence, people fighting and drinking, more alcoholic, more depression. I, I think so, you know, to my experience. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, I think unfortunately that's very true as well. Um, I, I'm not a mental health professional, but um, but yeah, I know, I know like losing structure and um, daily routine or having that really interrupted and having stressors like financial uh, issues, um, all those things adds up. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's those little things that add up to, to people to, you know, have, have people in crisis. And so, um, but yeah, I, I also wanted to mention like there's, there's, you know, help, help everywhere. Um, like I, I, I used to volunteer at uh, the National uh, Suicide Hotline. Um, so that's also, uh, if, you, if you live in the United States, that's a really good uh, place for people to call for information. It's not just people who are in, in um, immediate need. Um, it's for family members who, have, you know, who are helping those people or um, who just want information for local um, resources. That's a really good number to call. Um, national suicide hot prevention hotline and you know kazuki i i do there are a few quite a few more questions but since you just mentioned that um i think a really important part of this program is also providing some resources so i'm going to be dropping in the chat the link for the center for japanese mental health um and then i'm also going to be dropping the number for the national suicide prevention mm -hmm. lifeline um which I, i'm going to be dropping now yeah, those people who I used to, um, who I got the chance to work with, they're like the nicest people on earth. Mm -hmm. I, I really had the, you know, the best, like, um, it was really hard, honestly, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to lie. But, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but um, yeah, they, they're really um, nice people and they'll give you information that you need. That's good. Mm -hmm. so, so we have one, another, we have a few other questions and we still have like five Five, 10 more minutes. Um, okay. My name, my name is uh, Noboru Mishima. I live in LA. I have a question to Mr. Takizawa. Is your installation the process of your mental health sit situation or a healing process? Um, yeah, that's a really good question uh, because my, um, the preparation and the execution and the finishing all take really long time. Um, and not just my time as well as, you know, it takes time of my assistants and my, and, you know, other people who contribute to the installations. And so, mm -hmm. for example, the, the, the stopper driven piece that encompassed the central part of the exhibition room, um, that took um, well over two years or something to, uh, to, to yeah, produce and install. So um, I think the important thing is that um, is personally what I try to do is to take care of my mental health. Mm -hmm. um, if I can take care of other people's mental health, that's also a plus, but that's, you know, like I, I try to take care of my mental health. That's, that's, the, that's the most important thing. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the interesting question that I've had before was, do you have to be depressed to make strong work? And um, 
And that's a really hard question uh, because yes, I, I do get really inspired inspirational moments from, from being the person that I am and having the, the tough time that I have. But, you know, if you're not healthy yourself, if you're not productive, then, then it's just uh, all going all, all gonna to be not um, be executed and you're not going to be able to finish things. You're not going to be able to meet your deadline or you're not going to be able to, um, you know, see things the way it should be. So mm -hmm. uh, I think the mental health part, taking care of yourself, uh, being easy on yourself and uh, rewarding yourself with good things when you, when you have, you know, when you're past stages of the production, that's, that's a really important part of uh, my creation. Right. Yeah, process. You know, and you know, Kusuki, is... yeah. Um, what you mentioned, Kusuki, is really interesting, kind of like somebody asking, uh, like, do you need to be depressed in order to do strong work? There is also kind of a part of a question uh, that, that kind of like makes a statement that many artists have mental health problems. And I think, I think a lot of that, like there is a reality to that, but I think there's also, I think that's part mm -hmm. of the stigma. And I think it's a lot of times part of the artist stigma that the artist mm -hmm. is troubled, that the artist has mm -hmm. mental health issues and really like everybody does. It's not just the artist. It's it's not just kind of like this like romanticized idea that the artist is it has has mental health issues and is at in their studio yeah. kind of like doing work like everybody does. Your mm -hmm. your coworkers might your 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 scientist the the, the person mm -hmm. in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and your, I your do lawyer. too sometimes. <laughs> yes, I do too. I do too. <laughs> and then I tell my clients about like, uh, but you need to take care of yourself first. Like uh, you know, on the airplane you have a oxygen mask, right? Do you know instruction it? Even though you have a children sitting next to you, you are supposed to put on you first before you put on your child, right? Otherwise, sure. you guys both sure. supplicate. Mm. So That's you really please really take true. care of yourself first. It's not selfish. That means you are being responsible. Mm. I right, love that. If, if you don't save yourself, you're going to pass out. <laughs> right. <laughs> and not right. be able to help others. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Mm. So self-care is very important. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Um, somebody... Um, uh, somebody made a comment that they really appreciate this conversation. Um, this question might be too sensitive to answer, but I am curious, how did you discover you were bipolar? Um, um, and, and I think this is an important question and something that I, that I really value about uh, you, Kazuki, that you've always been very, very generous and, and very open to talking about these things. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that question. Um, I think it's very important. Um, and um, just, just like the conversation before, um, I'm sorry, my, my train of thought has just like disappeared. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I was, uh, you know, uh, I, think, I think when I left home, it was funny because like I, my, I went to high school in Thailand and I had to leave Thailand because uh, when I turn 20, I won't have a visa to stay there. <laughs> So I, I came over here uh, to Hawaii uh, on my own and, you know, mm. I'm like, oh, my parents not here. I can stay up all night mm. and make art and finish this, you know, project, mm. like you know, st stay up all night. And I did that <laughs> too much. And um, my structure got mm. like off, I think. And um, and so, um, yeah, um, that's that's when I actually figured out like, I, I needed to go to like regular regular therapy and I, I started mm -hmm. going to school uh, counseling um, mm -hmm. office and and then uh, from there I really loved going to like counseling just because it's like a free service that they offer to students that it's pretty much like it's like you can learn about yourself it's like a class specific to you mm -hmm. it's like why wouldn't I learn want to learn more about myself and make myself uh more productive and more useful <laughs> that's that's kind of right. how i felt and i, I was i felt like i was also mm -hmm. like really hurt inside and like not not oh. not producing not not being mm -hmm. um healthy either mm -hmm. so um and i didn't know anything about depression i actually mm -hmm. i don't think like because i come from a japanese family or what whatnot i don't mm -hmm. know why but but i don't think i've ever Mm -hmm. said I was depressed or anything like I, I knew nothing about depression 
Um, so, and I, I didn't think I was depressed either, but I, yeah, I started going to therapy and I, I learned I was depressed and then, mm-hmm. you know, I kept learning more about it and, um, you know, went to like the private, uh, you know, um, therapist who practiced, you know, therapy. And, and so, um, so yeah, I over, you know, mm-hmm. when I was in college, I learned up, I have bipolar disorder. Was that bipolar one or two or? It's a, it's a type two where. Um, type two, I see. Yeah, the uh, hypomanic. Yeah. So you, you mm-hmm. have more depressed, we have more mm-hmm. depressed episodes mm-hmm. and then, um, mm-hmm. you know, with, a uh, not, too high of yeah you don't have a manic you have a hypomanic right Ah, Mm -hmm. i see yeah and i do take medication Mm. and yeah all that good stuff (laughs) 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 um let's see um oh there's uh, okay there's there's i i I think i might do maybe because um well we still have a few more minutes so maybe we'll Mm. do like three or four more Questions. There's quite a few more questions coming in all of a sudden. Mm. So um, somebody asked, um, "How is depression treated in Japan at this state?" How, do you have, do you uh, have any, oh, how, how, is, how, how depression, is depression? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, treated in Japan, right? Compared to America. So the mm-hmm. big difference is uh, Japan depressions are more treated by medication. So doctor give you more like a SSRI, some sort of antidepressant medication, not too much of psychotherapy. But here in America, oh, depend on the type of depression. Is it like a mild depression, like a adjustment disorder or severe depression? Uh, we don't always just treat with medication, but or, you know, treating with some other modality like a talk therapy, sometimes like a yeah, like art therapy, different type of mm-hmm. therapy as well. So that's the big difference. The medication are more heavy in Japan, I think. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know if this is uh, my personal, just my pers- personal experience, mm-hmm. but um, when I went to go help my brother in, in, in Tokyo, mm-hmm. I felt like uh, he was assigned to a therapist mm-hmm. there and none of the other therapists in the area would mm-hmm. take him because because oh, really? he, didn't, he, he felt like he didn't, he didn't um, he relate didn't? to the person who he, he started with. And then everybody oh. else says, well, he goes there, though. Like, mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know if that's a, is a, is a thing in Japan or... or yeah, so just... Japan is a little, I don't want to say anything bad about Japan. <laughs> but uh, I think like, uh, you know, it's a little different, uh, like a system. For example, Japan, only like a psychiatrist, you know, or shinryo naika, which is like MD, but, you know, do a little psychology, something like that are treating you. But here in America, like me, I'm a licensed therapist, right? I don't have um, any medical degree, but we would treat. So, you know, we have more choice here, I think. Mm. Mm. So Japan is a little different because once you go to doctor, this do- you are under care of this doctor or something like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, but there's a question mm-hmm. uh, similar or in connection to that. Um, uh, Kazuki Kazuki San sounds atypical mm-hmm. in that he sought help on his own. How do we as a society identify students who need help and lead them to seek or accept help? Mm. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think there's different types, different severeness of um, help that people need. Um, I think the most critical one is, uh, um, you know, people who are suicidal, um, people mm-hmm. who are trying to, is like ready to end their life. That's, that's a really something like the, um, almost like a CPR, you know, people, some, some, it, 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 it only takes one good person to say, something to to stop that person from that you know um incident and then he may he or she may live for another i don't know seven years i don't know how 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 Mm. much but um but i i really felt like some of the things i learned uh when i was in uh taking the workshop suicide prevention workshop is uh looking for signs like um is this person trying to get rid of stuff like why is Mm. is this person like saying like, can you take care of my pet for me? Or, um, you know, like looking for signs um, 
like that and um also like uh just the the you know some people pretend really really well and be be functional and everything and mm -hmm. um struggling inside um but um but yeah just the over over overall tone like the mood the energy mm -hmm. level that's also mm -hmm. a good indication of uh if people are going through depression or not yeah we we do like a you know assessment like suicidal assessment yeah mm -hmm. But I think right now it's little changing though. More and more young people come to therapy, even they are mm. Japanese. And many times, you know, I'm so proud of my client, like uh, bring friends. Hey, it's good for me. It's good for you. And then, you know, my client drive and bring her friend to my office and introduce, you know, friend to me. And I think that's something, you know, it's been, it's changing in Japan, I think. That is that's, mm. that's really good to hear, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, well, maybe we'll take, um, there's quite a few questions, but maybe we'll take two more. Um, let's see. Um, oh, okay. So uh, to uh, Kazuki-san, uh, when you are working in your studio creating a piece, what are you thinking? For example, in your brother's case, were you actually thinking about his mental issue as you were designing those pieces? Hmm. Um, when I am making um, things, um, I'm at a different uh, stages of process, like whether I'm dropping it off the off somewhere or um, gluing back, everything is attached with different emotions. Um, uh, but I think at the end, um, I, think, I think the feeling that I get is uh, it's very relieving. It's really relieving to make these things to, to speak about. I, I'm, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm very lucky to be able to um, speak about my work. Um, and you can do that in a different, um, uh, you know, you know, levels. So uh, if, if you decided to, you know, do art as a hobby or just to kind of uh, try something mm -hmm. new or um, if you do it as, it as, as a profession uh, mm -hmm. or trying to become an artist, that's, you know, everybody has different um, feelings associated with making. But um, so sometimes, you know, making things can be stressful too for me as, mm -hmm. as an artist and uh, so um, I switch things around. I switch some things around if I'm in the process of doing this, and if I if I you know hit a wall or something, um, mm. I switch to something else that uh, that's all you know that's uh, that brings me a different feeling. Absolutely, and I think that answers another question too, uh, or part of another question, which was how does your mental uh, mental health affect your creative activities and, 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 and it's really interesting that you mentioned that kind of like if you if you hit a block you kind of like find a different outlet to kind of kind of con continue to work work through these yeah things. <laughs> yeah I think a lot of not a lot of people talk about the benefits of uh being uh having uh living with uh, mental illness is is it's really it's really it really makes you a resilient person um it really mm. makes you want to learn about different things and um i hope i hope i hope it does that for you um yeah if you if uh if you know it it uh it pushes you to um step forward so that you um you know you cross over that hill where you you thought it what you weren't going to be able to cross over because you, you thought the hill was too high you know it's always like it's always like that. It, it never seems possible to me for me <laughs> until this day. <laughs> and then, um, and then you, you switch things around, or uh, you know, you yeah, you have all these techniques like breathing technique or mm -hmm. um, other important things that you pick up along the way, like living lifestyle, living simple, or um, mm -hmm. creating space, or anything that that right. makes you feel good is gonna contribute to your um, yeah. happiness. Yeah, that's right. I mean, anything, you know, produce your dopamine, you know, that would be mm -hmm. very much, you know, the key, I think. Mm -hmm. Art would help to stimulate the dopamine production. 
So. Yeah, it just, which I, I it's true because I've been at least with my experience and with a lot of uh, friends and uh, particularly artist friends, um, like there's always these discussions of like, yeah, trying to work out, which some people like to work out, other mm -hmm. people don't like to work out, I don't like to work out. Uh, but there's also kind of like uh, uh, the diet or meditation or yeah. all these kind of like other right. aspects that can be woven into it, which I often see my art mm -hmm. making as a yeah. form of meditation. Right, and sensory system, which would mm -hmm. really help you and it calms your amygdala, you know, it actually in brain, it's very much uh, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think um, somebody else had asked, um, do mm -hmm. creative work is, do you think creative work is useful subconsciously working out other issues? But I think uh, uh, Dr. Hisimoto uh, just uh, mentioned, talked a little yeah. bit about that, of how, mm -hmm. how it is the brain and, and, and that how, how the brain actually functions with serotonin. Um, yeah, and then, dopamine and then amygdala. Dopamine. Yes, that's right. Mm. And I guess um, we'll close up with, the, with this question, and, um, which was, um, it, it was once again, kind of like bringing back these, 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 uh, uh, oftentimes connections that people make uh, when it comes to mental health um, and in in terms of its recognition within the artistic community is there is there more understanding and support in perhaps the artistic community than in the general population um, and how does the artistic community support each other in this regard mm. um. You know, I'm, I'm just an artist, so I can't speak for all artist communities, but, um, but I think, uh, yeah, like, like Andreas was saying, um, um, I think there is a, um, or like a relationship between like um, having people having mental health and people mm -hmm. being an artist. Um, I think that's a, a connection that, um, um, that's kind of know, known. And uh, so I think that uh, we, I see a lot of different types of characters uh, in the art community. And I feel like uh, as part of somebody who, uh, you know, have uh, create creativeness as, as your, um, you know, uh, your, your career path, I think, I think it's, it's, it's important to have, uh, an, you know, uh, an attitude to listen to everybody who's around you, who's like uh, really different and who's really, um, um, you know, challenging. And, and uh, so I think we do have the, the interesting group of people who, um, who, yeah, you know, we aspire each other and take care of each other, I, I think. Yeah, there's almost kind of, uh, at least one would hope that there's always kind of these, these ways of being able to that you're already within a community that relates and sometimes talking to your friends and talking to, to the people around you can sometimes become a little bit more easy. And, and I, I oftentimes, whenever I have a studio visit with someone, it's interesting how the studio visit almost serves as a studio visit, but also serves as a way of being able to communicate feelings and thoughts to another individual. So it's interesting how some of these things are slightly interwoven. You should still go to therapy, um, not just do studio visits. Um, but the, but it's it's interesting how these things kind of can be, oftentimes are interwoven into some some communities. Um, well, um, I don't know if 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 if, if Kazuki or Dr. Hitsumoto, if you have any any last comments before we we close the and wrap up the program. Well, thank you so much, and then this was great, and then, um, yeah, that's it. Arigato. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and there's many, 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 many messages of people being really, really grateful how this was a very important discussion, particularly from the Asian community, uh, coming from uh, from a person who is uh, Korean with depression, and also mm -hmm. somebody else mentioning how uh, they mm -hmm. were really thankful for what y'all shared and what Kazuki shared, because uh, mm -hmm. they had recently been uh, diagnosed and they had been learning a lot about themselves. So, mm -hmm. uh, so th thank you all. Thank you to Kazuki, thank you to Dr. Hitsumoto and the Japan Foundation for, for putting this together. Thank you, Andres. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. All right, um, thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to thank Mr. Takizawa and Dr. Hitsumoto uh, for participating and presenting a wonderful mm -hmm. 
and um, useful thoughts and information today. I really uh, thank you guys for sharing. And, in, in, and thank you, Andres, for uh, moderating the conversation and the questions. Uh, it was a very professional job. Thank you. And uh, Kazuki's exhibition is up until September 12th at Craft Contemporary Museum. I think just Andres um, dropped the link. So be sure to visit there to see his beautiful works. Um, okay, so, um, so once I close the webinar, there will be a pop-up link to the survey. So please answer that. Um, those, you know, we would really appreciate your cooperation. All right, so um, that's it. That'll be all for the day. So I will let you guys go. We really appreciate everyone joining us um, for the webinar today. We hope uh, you'll join us in the future too. Have a good one. Peace.